Hi, I'm Lois Levine, author of Juliet's Nurse, uh, which is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet from the point of view of the nurse. It also has a lot of bees and beekeeping in it, and I get a lot of questions from readers about that, so I thought I'd make a little video and tell you how I became interested in that as a theme for the novel. When I began writing Juliet's Nurse, I needed to think of a job for Pietro, Angelica's husband, to do. I knew that they weren't particularly wealthy. But I wanted him to do something interesting, and I realized that beekeeping, as I was doing research in the 14th century, was incredibly important in that time period. Why was it important? Well, first of all, honey was a main sweetener for food. They didn't have access to refined sugar the way that we do. And, uh, but beeswax was also incredibly precious as a lighting resource. Essentially, the fanciest kind of lighting were beeswax candles, as opposed to tallow candles, which were smoky and smelly, or torches, which were even smokier. And I love to write about food. If you've read my first novel, The Secrets of Mary Bowser, you know that. And I thought that making him a beekeeper would give me an excuse to write about a lot of yummy dishes that had honey in them, which I did do. But it meant that I had to learn something about bees. And so I apprenticed myself to a group of urban beekeepers here in Portland, Oregon, where I live. And the more I learned about bees, the more important they became in the novel. And they're important in terms of plot, what's going on in the life of the hive throughout the year helps me to figure out events that might be happening, that the characters might be involved in in the novel. But it also became really important to me as a theme. I didn't really understand until I was doing the research for the novel what hive mentality is or what it means that bees are essentially a super organism. Basically, when you see a bee out flying, gathering pollen or nectar, they're not doing that so that they're going to make honey that they're going to eat themselves. They're, they're getting ready to feed either the brood that's going to hatch later or bees that are going to live later on after that bee that you see out flying around dies. Most honeybees that we see flying around are only going to live for maybe six weeks and it takes longer than that for them to make honey or bee bread is what we call the, the food that's given to the, the, um, the brood. So. That became really interesting to me. If you think about the big cathedrals in Europe that took centuries to build, the people who designed those cathedrals or who first started to build them knew that they were never going to live long enough to worship in those buildings. They saw that they wanted to be part of something bigger than themselves, and that's what the cathedral or the whole religion meant to them. In a way, that's how bees function in the world. And as I was thinking about what it would be like to have Angelica's life and to live through so much loss, I realized that the bees were a, a way to think about being part of something bigger than herself and what attached her to things outside of herself so that as devastating things happened to her during the course of her life, she didn't lose hope. I think one of my proudest moments when the book first came out, a friend of mine read it and texted me, and the first thing she texted when she finished the book was, thank you for the bees. I think that she wanted there to be a hopeful message, and for me, they really are a hopeful message. Um, as you can see, this is my backyard of my house, and I've got two big hives here. Um, on the bio in the book, it says that I live with 60,000 honeybees, and actually, I live with 120,000 honeybees, because we now have two hives in the yard. And I think um, just getting to pass by them every day is really inspirational to me. They all have jobs to do in the community in which they live. Some bees go out and gather pollen. Some bees uh, are essentially in charge of making the honey within the hive. Some bees are taking care of the brood, the baby, uh, or the eggs that are waiting to be hatched. And they all have this part in their community. And I think it's really, for me, um, both exciting and soothing to be around that. And you can maybe even hear a little bit of the roar of the hive in the background. And when I sit here, even from where I'm sitting, I can smell the honey and other products of the hive that smell so super sweet. And it's just, it's a real privilege to get to be reminded of all that the bees do for us. Probably a third of everything that you eat or drink, uh, we only have because of the work of honeybees and other pollinators. So I've also become a big advocate for things that we can do to encourage more beekeeping and to help our hives survive.